Hello everyone, I am Mangla Sharma. I am assistant professor in department of physiotherapy, school of health sciences and my specialization is neurology. So today we are going to talk about muscle physiology. So muscle physiology is all about what muscle is made of, the structure of the muscle, the contractile filaments of the muscle, how the muscle is contracting, how it is relaxing and what all structures are there which are functioning behind this contraction and relaxation. So we will proceed with contents. So in this entire presentation, we will cover the introduction of the muscle, the classification of the muscle. We will talk about the activity of the muscle, how the muscle is going to help you in different activities. And we will be reading about the microscopic structure of the muscle that when we see the muscle through the microscope, how uh, you see the transverse lines, you see the striations or no, no striations and we will talk about the contractile filament of the muscle. So now we will start with the muscle, the introduction. So the human body has more than 600 muscles, muscles perform many functions. So in day to day activities, your activities of daily life, you drink, you eat, you walk, you sit, you talk to your friends. So all these works, your daily activities are done with the help of muscles. So if your muscles are not contracting or relaxing fully, you're not able to perform your activities of daily life. So muscles are classified by three different methods based upon different factors. There are three classifications depending upon the presence or absence of striations. So striations are the transverse lines. Your muscles are having some striations. So these are the transverse lines present in your muscle. So depending upon the striations, we are having some categories. Then second classification is depending upon the control. So depending upon the control, our muscle can be classified into different subcategories like voluntary, involuntary, muscles which can act their self and which are under the control of us, human body. So the third are depending upon the striations and situation. So striations, control and situation. So there are three classifications of the muscle. A band or a bundle of fibrous tissue in your human body or animal that has the ability to contract producing a movement or maintaining the position of parts of body is actually called as a muscle. So this is the definition for a muscle. It is the fibrous tissue which is having ability to contract, to relax and to perform a kind of a activity in your body. So your entire activities which you perform in your day to day life are only possible with the help of a good muscle contraction and relaxation. So up next we will talk about the classification. So the first classification is depending upon striations. So depending upon striations, we have two kind of uh, subcategories classification, striated muscles and non-striated muscles. So striated muscles are those muscles which are having striations in them. That means they are having a kind of a transverse lines in them. And non-striated muscles are those muscles which do not have any kind of striations in them. That means they are plain muscles. They don't have transverse lines in them. They are just plain muscles. They are called smooth muscles also. So the striated muscle is a muscle which has a large number of cross striations that are called as transverse lines in them. And skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles are the striated muscles. So it states all the muscles present over your skeletal and the muscle which are supporting your heart are striated muscles. That means they are having a transverse lines or the cross striations in them. On the other hand, non-striated muscles which do not have striations over them, that means transverse lines. So it is called plain muscle. So it is found in the wall of visceral organs. So all the muscles which are supporting, which are present on the walls of your visceral organs, for example, urinary bladder, your abdomen, all those muscles are non-striated muscles because they are linked to your visceral organs. They doesn't have striations in them. So these were the two classification. Uh, these were the classification on the basis of striations, which are of two striated and non-striated. So up next, this is the picture representing skeletal muscle, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. So skeletal muscle is longitudinal having transverse lines pa present parallel to each other. The smooth muscles are not having any transverse lines. They are smooth, the plain muscles and cardiac muscles also have longitudinal structure having transverse lines over them. So skeletal and cardiac are having striations and smooth muscles do not have striations. So it is in the part of 
non striated muscle which means plain muscle so up next is depending upon the control so depending upon the control the muscle are classified into two voluntary muscles and involuntary muscles so voluntary muscles are those muscles which are controlled by our own will supposedly if i have to contract my elbow and i have to take a glass of water from the table and i have to drink a glass of water so if i have to drink water and glass is here on my table and i have to lift it up towards my mouth so that is the function of my biceps muscle my wrist flexors right my elbow flexors so they will only work if i am allowing them to do so if i want to drink a glass of water i have to take my hand towards the glass and then glass have to be bring back to my mouth so these muscles are skeletal muscles so they are voluntary muscles that means whenever i want to uh, want to contract them i can contract whenever i want to relax them i can relax so these muscles are innervated by somatic nerves the next category is involuntary muscles so all those muscles which are not in our control the muscles which are contracting and relaxing they self are called as involuntary muscles so involuntary muscles are all those muscles which are not under our will they do their function on their own for example the cardiac muscles and our smooth muscles the muscles which are present along with our with our organs so cardiac muscles like our heart is beating all the time that beating is not under our control we cannot control the beating of heart that pumping action that muscle work over the heart is involuntary process it is it is running all the time it is not in our control we cannot relax it by our own wish so the cardiac muscles are the involuntary muscles the organ muscles are the involuntary muscles and skeletal muscles are the voluntary muscles so up next in this picture you are able to see your heart beats and your stomach digest food involuntarily so heart is doing its function it's pumping blood to your body it is a involuntary action we cannot control it and on the other hand whenever you have a stomach you have a digestion you eat food that digestion is also being supported by some muscles so it is also a involuntary action on the other hand when you have to lift something that is a voluntary action in which your arm muscles are being used i have given already an example of drinking water so depending upon situation we are having three kinds of muscle situation means where they are actually present so first category is skeletal muscles second are cardiac muscles and third are smooth muscles so i have mentioned over here skeletal muscles are situated in association with bones forming the skeletal system so all the all the muscles which are over your skeletal which are supporting your skeletal system are the skeletal muscles they form 40 to 50% of the body mass so your skeletal muscles are forming 40 to 50% of the body mass and they are voluntary and striated so voluntary and striated are your skeletal muscles and fibers of skeletal muscles are arranged in parallel in most of the skeletal muscles muscle fibers are attached to the tendons and then those tendons are attached to the bones so skeletal muscles are anchored in such a way that they are having one tendon which is being attached to the bone so there are three types in upon the situation category skeletal muscles cardiac muscles and your smooth muscles so skeletal muscles are the muscles of your body smooth muscles are the muscles of your visceral organs and cardiac muscles are the muscles of your heart so this is the structure of a skeletal muscle uh, in this photo you can see they have shown epimysium perimysium and endomysium so these are the three layers epimysium is the outermost perimysium is the middle one and endomysium is the innermost covering so if you see a transverse section of a muscle you cut the muscle into a transverse section and you see with the microscope you can, you are able to see the three layers the outermost which is covering is the epimysium the innermost is the endomysium and the middle one is the perimysium so up next is cardiac muscle forms the musculature of heart have told you smooth muscles the viscera your organs so smooth muscles form the main contractile unit of wall of various visceral organs so visceral organs are only working with the help of smooth muscles when they are contracting and relaxing so the relaxation and contraction of organs is depending upon the smooth muscles 
So next we will talk about the structure of muscle. So in the structure of muscle we will talk about what muscle is made up of, what are the contributions to the muscle, how it is making its muscle mass. So muscle mass or muscle tissue is made up of large number of individual muscle cells called myocytes. So myocytes are the cells which are present in your muscle because they are long, they are slender and sleek. So that is why they are also called as muscle fiber. So the muscle cells are commonly called as muscle fibers. Why? Because they are long and slender in appearance. So whenever your uh, cells shape, depending upon the shape of the cell, it is called as fibers because they are long and sleek, they are slender in appearance. So skeletal muscles are multinucleated and are arranged parallel to one another with some connective tissue in between. So they are multinucleated, there are more than one nucleus in the skeletal muscles. Muscle mass is separated from the neighboring tissue by a thick fibrous tissue layer known as fascia. So uh, each muscle mass is separated from the neighboring one because they are covered with some kind of a protective covering which is called as fascia. Each muscle fiber is surrounded by a connective tissue that is called as endomysium. Individual fasciculi are enclosed by perimysium and your entire muscle is surrounded by a connective tissue called as apimysium. So there are three layers, apimysium, perimysium and endomysium. So in this very structure you are able to see about the apimysium, perimysium, endomysium, the tendon which is being attached to the bone. So how that muscle is getting attached to the bone, it is anchored by a hard structure, a tough structure called tendon. It have three layers covering the apimysium, perimysium and the endomysium. So in this very structure you are able to see how one muscle fiber, then multiple muscle fibers are enclosed by endomysium. Then those bundle of muscle fibers, multiple bundles are enclosed by perimysium and then the entire number of those bundles is enclosed by your apimysium. Muscle fiber is a cylindrical in shape, average length of 3 cm and width of 1 to 4 cm. So each muscle fiber is a slender, long, longitudinal in structure and it is called muscle fiber, it is called muscle cell. Its length is 3 cm and it is wider width 1 to 4 cm of width. So the diameter of muscle fiber varies from 10 microns to 100 microns. So depending upon uh, the muscle mass, some muscles are very thin, some muscles are in fatter tissues. So that is why the diameter of the muscle is varying that is from 10 microns to 100 microns. So muscle fibers are attached to a tough cord of connective tissue called tendon via which it is being attached to the bone and it is making different uh, supporting structure for bone, for joints. Each muscle fiber is enclosed by a cell membrane which is called as sarcolemma. So the membrane which is covering the muscle fiber is called as sarcolemma and the cytoplasm of the muscle is known as sarcoplasm. Like in your cell, if you see there is a cy cytoplasm, there is a cell body in the cell and if you see the body of a muscle, the cytoplasm of the muscle, it is called as sarcoplasm. So there is a difference of cis cytoplasm and the sarcoplasm. Myofibril are fine parallel filaments present in sarcoplasm of the muscle cell. So there are some filaments which are present over the sarcoplasm that is the body of the muscle which are called as myofibrils and they run through the entire length of the muscle fiber. So through the entire length of muscle fiber there run some structures called myofibrils. So the length of a myofibril varies between 1 cm and 4 cm. So the length of uh, muscle this myofibril is from 1 to 4 cm depending upon the length of a muscle fiber. So it depends upon how much is the length of a muscle fiber then there is a length of a myofibril because it is present in the sarcoplasm. In some muscle fibers some of the myofibrils are arranged in groups. In some of the muscle fibers some myofibrils are arranged in groups and those groups are called as Cohen's areas or fields. So up next is microscopic structure of a myofibril. Microscopic structure means whenever you see a muscle through a microscope. So if there is a muscle and we are using a microscope or, and we are looking that particular muscle through the help of microscope, how it appears? 
so we are able to see different uh, things in a muscle through a microscope we can be seeing some kind of transverse lines those are the bands there are different lines there are different bands different zones areas so the light microscopic studies shows that each myofibril consists of number of two alternating bands isotropic and anisotropic sections or you called it as segments or disc these bands are formed by muscle proteins so there are some proteins present in muscles and those proteins are making these bands so the two bands are light band and dark bands the light bands are called as i band i band and the dark bands are called as a band why the light bands are called as i bands because they are isotropic in nature and the dark bands are called as a bands because they are anisotropic in nature so the light bands and dark bands light bands are called as i bands because they are isotropic in nature the dark bands are called as a bands because they are called as anisotropic in nature so the light band and the dark band so what do you mean by isotropic and a anisotropic sorry so the light band is called isotropic band because it is isotropic to polarized light whenever the light is passed through the muscle fiber at this area the right of rays are refracted back to the same angle whenever the polarized light is been passed through the dark this isotropic area this light band area the muscle the light are refracted at the same angle so that's why it is called as isotropic in nature and the second one dark band whenever the polarized light is being put or passed through that particular area the refraction is not at the same angle but at different angles so that's why it is called as an isotropic so light band is i band isotropic band because if it is isotropic to polarized light whenever the polarized light is being passed through the muscle fiber at this area th there is a refraction at the same angle on the other hand in the dark area which is your dark band or you say a band whenever light pass through this very area it doesn't refract back to the same angle but to the different angles that's why it is called as an isotropic a n an isotropic an means not iso means it and trops means turning it is same for the both only difference is with the i and an so in an intact muscle fiber i and a bands of the adjacent myofibrils are placed side by side so it states in the muscle both the bands are present parallel to each other arranged in such a way that they are present along with each other so i band is divided into two portions there are two portions of i band by means of a narrow and dark line and it is called z line so i band is divided into two equal halves by a dark line in passing through it which is called as z line so the z line of one side and z line of another side they are two z lines they are i band and i band present on the uh, last most portions i band and i band and the central one is a band which is the darker band so there are two light bands present just at the some distance to each other and there is a a band which is present in the middle so the i band which is present on the sides is getting a line passing through it which is called as z line or say z disc so it is from the name from uh, from some german language which states between the disc so the word which is from the z is means between the discs and the z line is formed by protein disc which does not permit the passage of light so it is a protein disc which does not permit the passage of light so the portion of myofibril in between the two z lines so there is one uh, light band there is another light band the area between the two light bands or you say there are two lines passing through the i band z line and z line so the area which is between these two z lines that is called as sarcomere so the area between the two z lines is called as sarcomere so sarcomere is the structural and functional unit of muscle sarcomere is the structural and functional unit of a skeletal muscle it is also called the basic contractile unit of a muscle basic contractile unit of a muscle so each sarcomere extends between two z lines thus each myofibril contain 
many sarcomeres arranged in series throughout its length. When the muscle is relaxed state, the average length of each sarcomere is 2 to 3 microns. So, uh, look up at this picture, there are two Z discs have been shown. The center one is the thick filament, the side ones are thin filaments. The I bands in the sides and A band in the center. So, the Z line is passing through the two A bands. I, I am sorry, it is I band and the A band is in the central one. Okay. So, the components each myofibril consist of an alternate disc A band and I band. Alternatively, they are present in the middle is the A band, there is a light area called H zone. So, A band is otherwise a dark band, but there is some area in the center of the A band which is called as H zone, which is called as H zone, H means hell, which means light in German and H is being discovered by Hansen, that is why it is named H. In the middle of H zone lies the middle part of myosin filament. So, it states the myosin filament is present in the A band, which is the central most and your actin filament present in the side I bands. So, M line is formed by myosin binding proteins. So, in the middle of H zone, there is also one line which is called as M line which is named from the myosin filament and that because the center portion of the myosin is present in the A band, that is why this line have been given the name M band, M line because it is having, it is containing myosin binding filaments or proteins, myosin binding proteins. So, in this picture you are able to see the Z line, M line, thin filaments and thick filaments. It is a structure of myofibril. This way the Z lines, M lines are arranged in your muscle fiber. If we have to talk about the electron microscopic study of a sarcomere, sarcomere is a structure and function unit of a muscle as you all know. So, if we see through the microscope, electron microscope, the muscle your sarcomere which is the structure and function unit, we are able to see two types of myofilaments, two types of myofilaments. One are called as actin filaments and another are called as myosin filaments. So, the actin filaments are thick, thin filaments and myosin filaments are thick filaments. So, the actin filaments are having diameter of 20 Armstrongs and myosin filaments are having diameter of 15 Armstrongs, 115 Armstrongs. So, actin are thin with just 20 Armstrongs and myosin are thick with 150 Armstrongs. So, they are cross bridges. Whenever you see the muscle through electron microscope, you will be see a lot of cross striations. You will see the bridges between the myosin and the actin filaments. So, some lateral processes called cross bridges arise from each myosin filament. These bridges have enlarged structures called myosin heads at their tips and myosin heads attach themselves with the actin filaments. These heads pull the actin filaments and this way the contraction in the muscle is occurring which is called as sliding mechanism of or rashe mechanism, sliding mechanism or rashe mechanism. So, during the contraction of a muscle, the actin filaments glide down between the myosin filaments. So, the myosin is in the center and actin is on the sides. So, myosin is the center it is making a connection with actin, then it is pulling both the actin filaments towards the center, towards itself. And this way your actin is being gliding down towards the myosin filament and it is approaching the H zone and then corresponding actin filament. So, actin filament from both of the sides being dragged and it is being taken to the center which is the myosin area and there it is about to make a contact with the opposite side actin filament. So, the Z line also approach the ends of myosin filaments so that H zone and I bands are shortened during contraction to the muscle. So, during the relaxation of the muscle, the actin filaments and Z lines come back to original position. So, once the actin being pulled into the center because myosin have made a connection with actin, then though the, both the actin filaments make a contact with each other in the middle area which is called as your dark band or is having a light area of H zone and then again on the time of relaxation it is getting back to their areas which is their light areas, the light bands. So, the contractile elements or proteins of a muscle are myosin filaments and actin filaments. Myosin filaments are formed by myosin molecules. Actin filaments are formed by three types of proteins called actin protein, tropomyosin and troponin. 
So, actin, tropomyosin and troponin, there are three kind of proteins in the actin filaments. These four proteins together contribute the contractile proteins. So, they all work together and leads to the contraction of a muscle and or you say the contractile elements of the muscle. So, actin filament and myosin filaments are the contractile filaments of a muscle. Myosin is having only myosin molecules, actin is having actin is having three kind of proteins, actin protein, tropomyosin protein and third one is troponin. So, there are three kinds of proteins. Now, uh, we will talk about myosin and actin. So, your myosin is consisting of 200 molecules of myosin and each myosin is having two portions, the tail portion and the head portion. So, the tail portion of myosin molecule it is made up of two heavy chains which twist around each other in the form of a double helix. Like in DNA you see the double helix, same way myosin is also having the double chain which is twisting around each other. This is the tail portion of the myosin. Now the head portion of the myosin at one end of a double helix, now the tail, the tail, the double helixed one, one end of a, uh, the one end of a double helix chain at one end of a double helix both heavy chains turn away in opposite direction. So, at the one end both the chains go in opposite direction and form the globular head portion. So, the name is globular that is the portion of head that globular portion is being made when they are twisting away they are twisting to the opposite direction. Thus, the head portion has two parts, two light chains are attached to each part and of the head portion of a myosin molecule. So, two portions and two light chains are attaching to the each portion. Each myosin head has two attachment sites. It is each head, there are two heads and both of the heads are having two, two attachment sites. One side is for actin filament and another side is for, other side is for the uh, ATP molecule. So, whenever there is a contraction of a sarcomere, the actin have to be pulled by myosin. Myosin is making connection with actin at these connecting sites on which they are getting attached. Then actin molecule. So, the actin molecules are the major con constituents of the thin actin filament. So, actin molecule is the main contribution. Each actin molecule is called F actin. So, actin molecule is otherwise also called as F actin and it is the polymer of a small protein known as G actin, G actin. So, there are about 3 to 300 to 400 actin molecules in each actin filament. So, approximately 3 to 400 actin, actin molecules are present in actin filament. The actin molecule in the actin filament are arranged in the form of a double helix. Each F actin molecule has an active site to which the myosin head is being attached. So, that is all for today. So, in this very lecture, I hope you must have learned a lot. You must have learned a lot about your classification of a muscle, muscle, its structure, its microscopical structure and its electron microscopical structure. So, with this, I am finishing up this lecture. Thank you very much.